Hello, hello. Trying to rank Sanibo and Captiva's top beaches is tricky as they are all amazing in their own right. But I've spent over 20 years photographing on these very sands, so I'd love to share my thoughts. What's your favorite beach? Which one would you rank number one? Let me know in the comments below. There are many stretches of beach that are easier to access through resorts and residences, but I'm only going to cover publicly accessible beaches with paid parking. I'm going to take this in two sections. I will start with my top five Sanibel beaches and then move on to the Captiva beaches. Let's start with the Sanibel beach that's on my number five spot. Tarpon Bay Beach. Tarpon Bay Beach is located at the southernmost point of the island at the end of Tarpon Bay Road. So it's a great spot to see both sunsets and sunrises. This beach has a great central location. It's ideal for swimming and awesome for shelling. Many resorts flank this beach, so at times it may get a little bit crowded. The public parking lot is around a quarter of a mile walk from the beach. The lot has disabled spots and facilities for showering and parking for cars and small RVs. At the boardwalk next to the beach, there are several disabled spots, picnic tables and a bike rack. Tarpon Beach has a central location and about one mile north there are plenty of the island's best restaurants, shops and Bailey's General Store. The store has been on the island since 1899 and has everything you could ever wish for for a trip to the beach. My number four pick, located off of Cassiabel Road on Algiers Lane is Gulfside City Park. Gulfside City Park is probably one of the lesser known public beaches on Sanibel, so it is often easier to find parking. There is a short walk to the beach from the parking lot of about 100 yards. The beachfront is free from development, which gives you an awesome tropical island feel and a lot less foot traffic. There is conservation land on one side called the Perry Tract. There are picnic tables, a shade pavilion, and charcoal grills near the parking lot. And there is a restroom facility with outside showers. The simplicity is what makes this beach so special. Just lush vegetation and a great beach. Not to mention the incredible history of this beach. Check out the videos we did about Gulfside City Park and the Perry Tract to learn more. My number three spot goes to Lighthouse Beach Park, located on Point Bell, which is at the easternmost tip of Sanibel Island. We have Lighthouse Beach listed as the number three spot, but it could easily be ranked number one if you love shelling, fishing, and wildlife. Lighthouse Beach has plenty of parking with one large parking lot on the south side of the peninsula and two smaller parking lots on the north side close to the fishing pier. This beach is a can't miss, not only famous for the lighthouse built in 1884, but equally for its shelling and its abundance of wildlife. Look for Osprey on the gantry railings of the lighthouse or on the man-made platforms. Gopher tortoise can be seen in the undergrowth or occasionally walking across the pathways. There are lots of shorebirds and fish are plentiful. You will often see dolphins feeding in narrow channels around the peninsula. If you don't see as many shells as expected, worry not. This can change with one tide or one good wind, so don't get discouraged. On the northern side of the peninsula, you have a great view of the entire causeway. And off to the east, you will have views of Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach, and on a really clear day, you will see all the way down to Naples. The fishing pier is well known locally for its great fishing. I like to chat with the fishermen to see what they're catching. Make sure you go to the lighthouse to see it up close. Check out the video we made about its history. Certain times of the winter months you can see the sunrise and sunset from this very beach. Definitely worth checking out. This beach has two restrooms, outdoor showers, grills and shaded walks. It also has info boards about shelling, wildlife and other topics scattered around the park. It really is an ideal spot for the whole family. At the complete opposite end of Sanibel is the location of my number two spot. Blind Pass Beach. You can find this beach on your left before you pass over Blind Pass Bridge to Captiva. This beach is absolutely gorgeous and has much to offer. 
Fishermen love it here, especially fishing off the bridge where you can expect to catch snook, trout, redfish, and much more as they navigate the pass. You will also see surfers when winds are favorable. The tides coming in and out of the pass make this beach a top shelling spot, but be cautious of the currents in the pass, they can be really strong. You can walk along the beach under the bridge to the back bay to check out the fish and wildlife. Parking is very limited, so allow time to wait for a spot during high season. There are no restroom facilities, just a bike rack and a few handicapped parking spots. Restrooms and showers are located across the bridge at Turner Beach. Blind Pass Beach is really close to some awesome local restaurants and the Santiva General Store. Be sure to check them out during your time here. Being able to do all this without having to even get in your car is what makes this spot so special. My coveted number one spot goes to a beach that any beachgoer would appreciate. It's stunning, there is plenty of wildlife and the facilities are outstanding. It really has something for everyone. Bowman's Beach. Bowman's Beach is located off of the Sanibel Captiva Road at the end of Bowman's Beach Road. This public beach has the largest parking lot by far. Facilities at Bowman's Beach include restrooms, outside showers, a changing area, picnic tables with charcoal grills, hiking trails, a free kayak launch, an exercise trail, a kids playground, and a drink vending machine. The parking lot also has seven parking spots dedicated for vehicles with trailers or RVs. The parking lot is about a quarter of a mile from the beach, but don't let that deter you. The walk is well worth it. However, a beach cart might be a good idea. As you cross the short bridge over the bio, make sure you pause to look around. I've seen birds, fish, manatee, alligators, and much more. You can even launch a kayak here and do a self-guided tour. Once you cross the bridge, you will be greeted by a beautiful, white-sanded, super-wide beach. You will have plenty of space to spread out compared to some of the other beaches. A short walk to the north or south will give you relative seclusion. It can still get busy at certain times of the year, so make sure you get there early. With the trails and walks, you will have plenty to do and see for a full day trip. It's also a great place to check out the sunset. Before I continue, I'd just like to thank our supporters, Bailey's General Store, Spoondrift Island Bowls, Three Crafty Ladies, and Gator Bites Taylor Now. Without them, this content would not be possible. Now on to Sanibel's little sister island, Captiva. Captiva only has two beaches with public parking lots. My number two ranked beach is the perfect place to look for the elusive green flash at sunset. Allison Hagerup Beach Park. Allison Hagerup Beach is located at the very end of Captiva Drive, just a short distance past the entrance to South Seas Island Resort. This beach has parking for around 40 cars and portable restrooms. Just be prepared, the cost of the parking at this beach is significantly higher than any other public beach on the islands. Current parking rates for all the beaches mentioned are linked below. Saying that once you park, it is just steps to the sand. This beach is the quieter of the two public Captiva beaches. Visit here to find some space to spread out and take in the beautiful waves crashing and get a magnificent view of the sunset. The proximity of the trees on this beach provides great morning shade. It is also just a short walk to nearby restaurants and shops. This beach is named after Alison Hagerup. Alison worked tirelessly for the Captiva Erosion Prevention District for 20 years and is a big reason our beaches are so beautiful today. And my number one ranked public beach on Captiva is, you guessed it, Turner Beach. Turner Beach is located across the channel from Blind Pass Beach. The parking lot is immediately to your left after you cross the bridge onto Captiva. There are restrooms, outdoor showers, and free handicap spots. Parking is very limited, so allow plenty of time to get a spot, especially during high season and holidays. Like Blind Pass Beach, Turner Beach is great for fishing and is a popular surf spot when the winds are favorable. 
Make sure you walk over to the rock jetty on the southern side of the beach to see people pulling up fish from the pass. Lots of shells wash up between the jetty and the beach, so shelling is super popular here too. Turner Beach is also a great spot to see the sunset year round. This concludes the roundup of top public beaches on Sanibel and Captiva Islands. But I think I should give an honorable mention to two extra beaches that were not on this list because of technicalities. First off, Silver Key Beach on Sanibel. Silver Key Beach was omitted because it has no dedicated parking. However, if you're looking for the most secluded beach on the island, this is it. Silver Key Beach is part of a 64 acre preserve named Silver Key Preserve. You'll have to take a bit of a hike or go by boat or kayak to get there. So I'd say this beach is better suited for the more adventurous type. Parking is available at two somewhat distant locations. The closest lot is the Blind Pass Beach parking lot. Silver Key Beach is located about three quarters of a mile south. You can walk along the beach. As you walk, you will pass close to the Santiva General Store. Be sure to stock up with drinks and supplies when you leave. The bigger lot at Bowman's Beach may offer you a better chance of parking. From the parking lot, you can take the trail which runs parallel to Bowman's Beach North or simply head north along the beach itself. Apart from the facilities at the parking lot, there aren't any when you arrive, so be sure to come prepared. You may have to navigate through the water around some driftwood and foliage to get there, so check on the tides. When the winds are blowing from the north, surfers like to ride the waves from Silver Key Beach to Bowman's Beach. This beach is completely untouched by human development. Just you, the sand, the shells, the Gulf of Mexico, and the tropical vegetation. Silver Key Beach is also flanked by a bayou to the east, which is teeming with wildlife. You can see shorebirds, reptiles, tortoise, and lots, lots more. It may not be the easiest beach to access, but it's well worth the trip. This is a beach for nature lovers and the people that want to avoid the crowds. The next spot I left out of the list are the beaches on the Sanibel Causeway Islands. Technically, they are not part of Sanibel. However, they are the best place to go if you want to pull up in your car and be feet from the water. Perfect for get togethers with a big group of people. Great for fishing and great for bringing all your beach equipment, grills, easy ups and things like that. Jet skiing, kiteboarding and windsurfing are all super popular, although you must go to one of the boat ramps at either end of the causeway to launch your craft. People will also bring RVs for the day, but just a heads up, no overnight camping is allowed. There are picnic tables, grills and restrooms. The causeway is also one of the few spots that you can see the sunrise over Fort Myers Beach and then watch it set over San Carlos Bay. So plan to make a whole day of it. I hope you have enjoyed my tour of the top beaches of Sanibel and Captiva. What would you rank as the top beach? Let me know in the comments below. Download our free printable PDF about the beaches of Sanibel and Captiva. It includes everything in this video and so much more. Go to the sandcapguide.com slash top beaches or click in the link below. Also, join us on our Facebook group called Sanibel and Captiva Islands, Florida, where we chat and share everything we love about the islands. We'd love you to join us. If you'd like to champion the cause for clean waters and beaches, please support our friends at Captains for Clean Waters. Also, a massive thank you to our sponsors. Without them, the making of these videos would not be possible check them out in the description below. My name is Nick Adams. Please come and join me on the next one.